Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK and US citizen. And today we're having a casual video where I'm answering some of your questions and giving you some updates. So if you are interested in what's coming up on this channel, here's a spoiler alert for you. We have wartime recipes, dig for victory, and victory in the kitchen, wartime recipes by the Imperial War Museum. What could we be doing? I don't know. Comment below, see if you can figure it out. So I asked for some questions on my YouTube community and they did come in. I was afraid I was gonna have to come up with questions to ask myself and pretend like you asked me, but you guys did have some questions. So we are going to go through some of those today. I'm gonna reveal my deepest, darkest secrets, obviously. Um, it's really hot in this room because thankfully it is actually increasing in temperature in the UK for once um, and this room gets really hot. So that's an update that you didn't need to know. Hence the lack of a hoodie, because typically I just walk around in leggings and hoodies because you can do that in the UK most of the year, but not today. Okay, first question. Have you ever been to Milton Keynes? If not, maybe you should. It's the most American city in the UK with its grid system and car centric planning. And I wonder what you'd make of it. It'd be a very interesting travel video. I would love to go back to Milton Keynes and make a travel video. I went once like 10 years ago because one of my friends that I met working at an American summer camp, she lived in Milton Keynes and I was studying in London. So that's how I ended up in Milton Keynes like 10 years ago, visiting her. Um, and yes, I remember it being very American feeling and having lots of grids and lots of free parking back in the day. I don't know if that's still true now, but I do love an American feeling city. Next question. Have these deep dive videos reignited your creativeness? Does the minutia of seemingly insignificant things delight and surprise you as much as your videos do me? I didn't even read these before I started reading them aloud. That's so nice, Adam. Um, Yes, the deep dive videos and generally what I'm doing on this channel now feel much more creative to me than the stuff I was doing before. A lot of people were kind of surprised that I came back to YouTube, me too. But initially the reason why I really just let it go and stopped was because I wasn't having that much fun with it because I was doing a lot of things that I felt I should be doing based on what other people in the space were doing and I'm not really interested in doing that all the time. I still do videos like that nowadays that I think are more interesting but again I try and get more specific on this channel and even when I'm doing something like things I love about the UK I try and be more specific and I try and talk about things that you really wouldn't necessarily know unless you lived in the country for a while like I have. I feel like a lot of the channels, and I'm not thinking of anyone in particular, this is just like when I started a couple years ago how it felt. I feel like a lot of the channels would be people who were moving to the UK um, like for like six months or a year or maybe had only lived there like for a year and they're like discovering the country which is great and I'm sure you guys enjoy watching those channels but you recognize different things at that stage than you do at the stage I'm at so yes I feel much more creative now still eating mushy peas I actually had to freeze a lot because I could not eat all those mushy peas in like the three days I needed to so yes enjoying myself much more thank you for watching next question why aren't savory pies a thing in the US this was a month ago, so you probably didn't know I had a US versus UK pie video coming out, but watch that one. Has pastry been replaced with a tortilla slash taco? Americans do love a tortilla and a taco. I mean, we love a tortilla. You can put anything in a tortilla wrap. I use it all the time just for like, I like a tortilla with peanut butter and banana in it. And some people are like, that's weird, but it's just another type of bread. Americans love a tortilla, fact. Why is American cutlery usage so interesting? I will do a whole video about American cutlery usage. The one of the things that I have changed about myself since moving to the UK is when we when I first moved here, I changed how I used cutlery because we were going to like dinners and stuff with extended British family members and I didn't want to be the American like eating in I guess like an improper way. Um, I regret it now. I wish I had stuck with how I just regularly use my cutlery but I didn't and now it's too late to go back. So yes I actually have changed that pretty permanently. When I go back to America I pretty much do eat 
the British way, but I will do a whole video about that. And why, when grass-fed beef is so much better and cheaper, did the cowboys drive herds of cattle to the desert-like area of Texas where the grass is sparse, dry, and non-sustainable for cattle? Hugh, you are asking the important questions. I don't know the answer, but I'm sure I can find that out for you. Next question, how have you navigated the employment slash visa requirements? I'd love to see a reaction to the Evan Edinger visas video and get your story. I have done this in a video before. I will also put in the description, but the long story short, if I can even remember at this point how I got here, is I did a couple short-term student visas. Those don't count for anything. I was just coming over for a couple months as part of my um, US degree. Then I did a internship visa, which also didn't count towards settlement, but helps explain how I was still living here. Then I did a longer term student visa to do my master's degree, which was a year and a half. At that point, I had been living with my then boyfriend long enough to qualify for the two year partnership visa. And that visa started off on the settlement route. Um, and then that turned into a married partner visa versus an unmarried partner visa, but it's basically the same thing. And once I had done five years on those, then I could get citizenship. So I have never been sponsored by a company in the UK, except I didn't, the internship program I did was kind of like with the company's permission, obviously, but it was a separate entity sponsoring the visa. So I have been very lucky because I know in COVID, a lot of people who were here on work visas, so if they lost their job, their whole situation of living in the UK was done. They had to go back home because their visa was tied to their employment. My visa has never been tied to my employment. It has been tied either to um, being a student or to a partner. So if we had broken up or gotten divorced, then at that point I would have had to go home as well. So it's still tied to something, but now I have UK citizenship. So whatever happens in the rest of my life, I can always live in the UK. Next question. Are Americans reassessing their work-life balance as indicated by the mass movement of people from the traditional populated areas on the East Coast to the Southern states? Is this the same phenomenon as working from home in the UK? That is a great question. I don't have like the actual statistics. I can only tell you based on my experience talking to my American friends. I definitely think this is contributing to more people moving out of like the big cities and stuff similar to here. And I have friends who have been a lot more um, able to move around the country to try out different cities since people started working from home more and being able to actively choose whether they want a work from home job or not. And actually, even those who do have in the office style jobs, I think especially like the current generation don't feel tied to a job for a long period of time. And so people that I know aren't choosing to choose, aren't choose, aren't what? Aren't choosing where they live based on their job as much anymore, knowing that you might buy this house based on your current job, but your current job might change. So I think people are thinking more about where they actually would like to live and having work fit around that instead of the other way. Olivia says, I would love to see a deep dive into the difference between American and British names. I have now done that, so I will also put a link in the description. Someone says, how is the back going and have you visited any European countries yet? Okay, so the back thing is referenced to maybe two years ago. I did a video where I had to be lying on the floor because I have a slipped disc in my back, as many people do, and it just completely like went and I couldn't move and it was excruciating and this happens like once every six months, but it happened when I was trying to get videos done and so I filmed it on the floor. The answer to how my back going, thank you for asking, is actually honestly a lot better these days, even though it still does kind of trip itself up occasionally, it doesn't as much anymore. So hopefully that means good things for the future of the use of my back. Have you visited any European countries yet? Yes, I have visited quite a few European countries. I'll see if I can list them. I've been to France, I've been to Spain, I've been to Italy, I've been to Greece, I've been to Ireland, I've been to Denmark, I've been to Sweden for like 10 minutes off across a bridge from Denmark, I've been to Germany, I have not been to Portugal, 
I haven't been to Switzerland. I have been to Austria and I think that's the extent of my European country list. Someone asks, if the UK went to war with the USA, who would you fight for? Um, <laughs> I kind of mentioned this in my video on do I feel British or do I feel American? However, I do appreciate the response that somebody wrote, um, which was, haha, we'd all be safer if she made the tea. Yeah, that's accurate. I wouldn't want to fight for anybody really because I would be terrible in any sort of battle. Um, but I don't know, depends who had the better chance of winning. I'd use my dual passport to my advantage. Do you have dreams about the USA? Yes and no. I don't necessarily, like, yes I do because some of my dreams are naturally set there, but I don't necessarily have dreams about, like, actively going to the US. I just sort of am in the US in my dream. I wouldn't say I dream in a location. I wouldn't say I typically always know in my dream, like, which country I'm in. I sort of just end up in random situations. But yes, I do. I do dream about the US. I dream, I dreamt one time I had a whole Disney day on my own. Like, this was the dream that I went on a solo trip to Disney World. And it was a very vivid dream that I could really remember all of it. And it felt very relaxing. And like, I really did have a solo day at Disney World um, in Florida. So that was really nice. Somebody asks, I've just spent two weeks in Chicago visiting my oldest friend. I love the city, but how do vegetarians survive? I ended up eating a lot of fries and cheese sandwiches. Some restaurants had no veggie options. America, please do more towards catering for a wider audience. Yes, America is still not good at this necessarily. You'll find a lot more options. Well, I would say in major cities, but you were in Chicago and still didn't experience this. But there are some places that are more um, like vegan and vegetarian friendly and gluten-free friendly in the US, but still not a lot of places compared to here in the UK. I think people with um, any sort of like dietary requirements come to the UK from America fearing the worst, feeling like they're not gonna be able to find anything. And then they're so amazed that there's so many menus that clearly mark everything, that have options for loads of different people. It's really easy to find vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, whatever kind of food, especially in London. And yeah, I agree with you. I went to Texas one time. I've been to Texas multiple times, but I went to Texas a couple years ago and I pretty much eat vegetarian and I uh, couldn't really find much. I was even looking, I was like, can you, do you have like macaroni and cheese? That seems easy. And oftentimes the places would just be like meat houses and it's like they'd never met a vegetarian in their life. So that's Texas for you. Um, but yeah, it should be a little bit better in the other cities. But if Chicago is not good for vegetarians, then that's a good thing to know. I've never been to Chicago, but I would love to go to see the Home Alone house, which is just outside of Chicago. Actually, I have been to Chicago in the airport and saying the Home Alone house reminded me that when I ended up in the Chicago airport, which I can't remember why I was there, um, I went past the Home Alone um, like airport gate where the McAllisters have to run to to get on their flight in the first Home Alone and I recognized it by just walking past it. I was like, this seems like the scene where they're running through and it was the exact gate. So I have been only to the Chicago airport, and I can't really comment on their vegetarian options. Okay, that brings me to the end of this video. Hopefully you got some of your questions answered. Other ones I'll keep for future videos and some of you have given me some great video ideas in the comments of this section. So I will address those in entire videos. There's so many different things that we could do on this channel. Sometimes I have, what is it called? Analysis paralysis where I'm like, there's so many things I could do that I just sit here and don't know what to do because there are so many options once you start diving in to all the really cool and interesting things between the countries and about the UK. So stay tuned for more. Let me know in the comments how you're doing, how's life, give me your own update, and I'll see you in the next video.